as Andy was saying, uh, this is actually a little bit slightly, a little bit more interesting of a match, in my opinion, um, than what we're used to seeing in the format. We get Viscerai versus Lexi. Uh, depending on which version of Lexi um, CJ decides to go with, this could actually be a little more difficult of a match for Viscerai, which Viscerai does not have very many quote-unquote difficult matches in the format. Um, Starvo being one of the more difficult ones, obviously, because that's everybody's most difficult match. Um, but Lexi can be built um, a couple of different ways, either very, very, very fast um, or a little bit more mid-rangey with an ice and lightning mix. So uh, we'll see what uh, what CJ decides to do and how Nathan decides to react to that, if he's going to try to tempo into it um, or sit back and uh, play the, the typical game plan, which is try to build up a bunch of rune chance and kill your opponent in one turn. So Yeah, what yeah that's right. Um, Lexi... You don't really know what you're facing with Lexi until the game has already started. So you have yep. to be able to really uh, pivot during the game if you are going to try to store up those rune chants against an ice build or try to race the lightning. Yep. And um, if I had to guess off the bat based off of his equipment suite, I would say that he's playing a faster build, um, which if he's playing a super aggro build with the less ice cards, I think that's actually going to favor Nathan uh, in this matchup. Um, whereas if he has a lot more disruption, I think that that's going to be um, a little better for CJ, uh, the Lexi player, in that, in that sense. Yeah, I, I think the the lightning surge tells us everything we need to know there. Yeah, just seeing that yep. pitched. Yeah, looks like he's probably going to go a little faster. Snapdragons, Bullseye Bracers, Lightning Surge. What do Ice Lexis run in their arm slot? Um, Do they shock, charmers? Charmers, shock charmers, I believe, to produce more mm. frostbites. Mm. Right. Uh, the, the shock charmer is actually quite good. Allows you to get off that third or fourth arrow. Right. 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 Exactly. On a, on a big turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. And it's uh, over here. We see on the turn one, it looks like uh, Viserai Nathan over here built up some rune chance, and CJ decided to put one of those Bolton shots in Arsenal on the opponent's turn. That's one of the nice things about Voltaire and the new bows, is you can really load up if you go second on the first player's turn. Yep, absolutely. Um, it is a... I don't even know, are they choosing to go second right now, or because of that? Um, I haven't played uh, much Lexi myself, so I'm not sure. Are they actually choosing to go second or yeah i am uh i'm not quite sure myself i don't know i didn't see the die roll happen over here also did lexi forget his first tunic counter he did that's not a good way to start nope um... that's why <laughs> that's why i say you need to verbalize the phases of the game yep yep I, I number 18 <laughs> of this week's fat 201 if, if you, you guys... haven't seen it <laughs> If you guys haven't watched Josh's video on um, how to play like a pro, um, definitely go check that out. A lot of good things that'll help you guys um, stay focused yeah. and not miss your triggers in games and uh, play more efficiently. So um, you'll see here, Nathan actually kept a card in hand and used his armor to block there, um, which says to me that that card in his hand is quite important. Uh, it could be like a Mordred Tide or another Sonata or something like that, because I think he actually just blocked with a Sonata there too, didn't he? believe so so definitely want to keep uh keep those around in the deck kind of need those to win um we've got a pulse of volt haven coming out of the arsenal there which if you guys don't know uh triggers both of lexi's abilities so nathan will get a frostbite and cj will get go again on his first attack uh, which means this bolton shot is going to come in for some uh big time damage and have its effect live yep eight on hit reload yep the reload is not that uh, impactful here because Lexi yes. still has two uses of Voltaire, but that does save one energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also it triggers uh, Bolton Shot's uh, ability for go again, I believe, uh, naturally, yeah. instead of having to use Voltaire to buff it up to get that ability. When I see uh, Bolton Shot face up in the arsenal at the beginning of the turn, you know Voltaire isn't buffing it up. So being able to see, able to see something like the Pult of to give it that go again is really the to, to knock it out. Also, uh, someone in my stream chat has suggested that you guys make sure you switch your color to gray on TTS so you don't accidentally uh, hit anything while you're broadcasting. Uh, just a reminder to everyone viewing, thanks for watching. We are broadcasting on both the Card Guys YouTube channel and the uh, Andy Modell TCG YouTube channel. So both of us have links to the others in each other's descriptions.
Absolutely. And if you aren't subscribed to one or the other, make sure you do that. Like the video, help it broadcast to more people as we're streaming here. Uh, the four matches tonight are going to be world-class players. Um, Nathan being one of the uh, highest placing uh, Viscerai players. And actually, he was the highest placing Viscerai player uh, at the calling at Indianapolis and CJ. Um, I believe, I, I don't know much about the Hyperloops uh, roster. Do you know um, anything about CJ and the, and the Hyperloops, Andy? You know, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm actually not that close with CJ. I don't know too many of his accolades off the top of my head. But today, we definitely have uh, some strong action-packed competitors on both sides. Uh, with sure. uh, later tonight, a game with uh, Cody Williams, currently ranked number four in ELO in the world. That's that's amazing. <laughs> I believe Nam's got to take on Cody tonight. So that'll be that'll be a really good match. Uh, calling champion versus number four ELO in the world. That's uh, that's about as good as it gets. Yeah, I'm very excited for those. It's it's nice we were able to get all of these all in a row tonight. Um, it's always fun to have them back to back, not just for mm -hmm. us, but also for the viewers, so we can have one of these long marathon streams. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, there is a three of a kind live at the moment, so this is going to be one of those turns that Nathan's going to need to survive. Um, it's just a lot of cards he's going to have to deal with. This endless arrow representing uh, even more damage and card efficiency. So uh also having to deal with a frostbite on his turn if there's anything that he decides he wants to do i believe he took like four damage or so off that last attack meaning that the cards in his hand he does want to uh save or he's thinking that there's something more important later on in the chain that he's going to need to block uh like an endless arrows like this so we'll see what he decides to do with those last three cards in his hand mm -hmm. i'm also interested to see if he put in uh any of the bigger defense reactions um i doubt it um, but uh, there usually are some unmovables in the sideboard for the Starvo match. I don't believe he would bring those in in this matchup, but there's also a possibility that he does. So I'm um, curious to see if he makes any decision like that. Yeah, in, Lexi in... can pump up her attacks pretty, uh, pretty high, so the defense reactions can come useful if you're trying to fatigue. On the other hand, if you're racing, it's really not as big of a concern. For sure, for sure. I don't think uh, I don't think Viscera is ever going to try to race through a bunch of frostbites and lightning cards. Uh, most of the aggro matchups they try to OTK, I believe. That sounds right. In general, I think defense reactions against Lexi is a pretty big gamble. Yeah. Because a single frostbite token actually messes up a lot of the defense reactions efficiency. It makes sink below and fate for seeing cost a card. It makes unmovable cost two cards. So it's. Yep. It's really, um, I, I don't, I don't think defense reactions are where you want to be. I agree. What do you think, uh, Josh? You know Nathan better than anybody except, in here. Except, except for reduced to rude chant because. <laughs> well, of course that one's just pretty. Be, that one's pretty no matter what. Infinitely. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, what do you think about uh, Nathan? He's usually pretty conservative with his armor. What do you, uh, what do you think about the uh, armor usage on that turn? What do you think that um, tells us about his hand? I'm still not sure which strategy he's going for here. Mm -hmm. Whether he's playing OTK or... Well, this should okay, give you so, a better idea. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like he's going for OTK here. You know, grab a red, read the runes here. Get yep. seven more, I believe. Or six more, I mean. Um, and go up to 12. Mm -hmm. So he's already, you know, a good portion of the way there. Um considering Lexi is one of the more fragile heroes in the game. I think oh, he yeah. could go off, he could go off at about 16 to 18 and be totally fine. Absolutely. Against the more frigy heroes, you typically want 20 to 24. Yep. So he's That's already true. a decently uh he's already a a good ways there. <laughs> what do you think about a snatch with the lightning press uh, showing? <laughs> you know, um, uh, again with that on hit available, this is actually quite threatening. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely a tricky one to try to block here. There's not really much you can do to stop some of the damage here unless you're just trying to give them your entire hand. And then you could get punished further um, by the Snapdragon Scalers into several more attacks. So you got to be this... real careful how you block this. Mm -hmm. I'm usually a fan of putting... Uh, if 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 you have one armor block, um, this is usually a card I would I would use it on, even though the lightning press is going to come out. Um, usually I'd give them like one card plus the last block on the skull cap here, force the use of the lightning press, and then see how they play the rest of their turn so that you have three cards left to block with for the rest of their turn. 
I, I agree that forcing the lightning press to be used early is better here. Yep. That way you don't have to worry about it on some further shenanigans down the line. But snatch with go again is uh, is, is quite good. <laughs> <laughs> the question here is, I, I think Nathan has to take a turn off to mm -hmm. set up another rune chant generation. And yep. then it's going to be another x amount of turns before he can find a uh before he can find his combo piece so this i i, I mean i i feel like even though he has 12 rune chance already like he has no arsenal he's playing blind off the top of his deck so yeah this is a not not a comfortable position at all uh, the yeah, only thing I think with the Mordred Tide, I feel like he was really holding back for it. And while it did prove worth it, it got him a lot of rune chance. Uh, he did end up using a lot of his equipment pretty early, it felt. Mm -hmm. It's like he's opting for the strategy we were talking about, forcing the lightning press. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it, really. If you overblock, you get punished. If you underblock, you get punished. So block efficiently and uh, make him make, make, make the play. Um, but what I was going to say, uh, while y'all were talking about like how, like, you know, kind of the comfortability of the position, um, when you're playing against aggro matchups like this, um, as uh, a Viscerai match, it always feels like there's not a lot your opponent can do unless they really threaten you big every turn. If Lexi ever has an off turn, um, it's just devastating because if, if he has some rune chant generation plus arsenal or whatever at this point in the game, he's at 26 life still. If he has any one turn like that, the game is almost certainly over. Um, so Lexi has to keep up some really high pressure, like with these snatches and lightning presses, things like that, being able to attack two or three times in a turn and present uh, 15 plus damage in a turn. Those are the turns that Lexi has to keep up or else Viscerai is able to just efficiently block. Um, make a few rune chants past the turn, and that's why aggro decks struggle so much into Viscerai. But I don't know. Lexi could be playing a Channel Lake Frigid or something like that. A well-timed Channel Lake can really, really screw up the combo. Um, or a well-timed, I don't know how many ice cards he's playing. Doesn't look like it's very many at all. Um, yeah, we haven't seen any yet. Other than the Pulse of Volt Haven, I think that's the only one we've seen. Yeah, with Viscerai doing OTK, it's almost like playing Solitaire for a bit. Your opponent can do whatever it wants, and then when you get that combo, that's the real turning point. Yep, that's exactly correct. And the fact that Nathan just took this Dazzling Crescendo uh, means that he's got some good cards in hand. Yep, he's he might even have Runechant Generation plus a combo piece, in mm -hmm. which case he would be ready to go off next turn. That's what it's looking like to me. He does have to be careful. He is running out of armor block. Mm -hmm. so once you decide to take some damage like that, it's usually a good idea just to, I mean, really, really have a good hand because that next hand, if, uh, if Lexi's able to put a bunch of pressure on your next hand, um, that means that you could be going to like sub five life when you combo which is kind of scary this is a really gross turn this is what seven plus five that's 12 plus four plus one that's 17 plus four i think that was 21 damage if i'm not mistaken um that's pretty it's pretty good but yeah like see with no arsenal one now. Of it's car it's car mm-hmm Yep, he had to block a lot that turn, and uh, but now Lexi is in her most vulnerable state, which is when she does not have an arsenal. Mm -hmm. So those natural go agains are going to be become more tough. But this is where Snapdragons comes into play. Oof, is that a blue lightning press? It is a blue lightning press. Quite interesting. Maybe it's a fairly similar theory to the lunging press, uh, like in Prism or something. You know, most people are trying to block exaxes. Um, being able to get over by one can can be enough sometimes. Yeah, and I've definitely had a, a difference of one be the difference between a skirmish or not when a Benji pulls an ancestral out. So, oh, absolutely. People are used to matching up that one damage exactly. Though, you no, know, now that it's healed, it's a bit less frightening. Right. Absolutely. Much easier to overblock by one, especially when you're coming in for five. 
So for those that don't know Dazzling Crescendo, all it needs to do is be fused to have go again. So he's able to save his Snapdragon Scalers for a further play in this turn. Um, doesn't need to waste that Lightning Press quite yet. Might even save it for the next turn um, as an Arsenal card. Uh, Rain Razors yeah. here is a fantastic card, especially if you can combine it with an Endless Arrows. It becomes absurd. Um, yeah, pushing that uh, Lightning Press to the bin there. We're going to get the... Last Voltaire trigger here for a fatigue shot, which Nathan generally doesn't care about fatigue shot unless he's planning on going off next turn. Yeah, and even if he is going off, uh, the fatigue shot just prevents the fur or halves the first attack that you make. And on the yes. OTK turn, while your first attack usually is something big with a bunch of rune chants behind it, uh, you can kind of work around it if you try hard. Yep, absolutely. Um, things like uh, Dread Triptych make great, great first combo pieces. Um, into into a fatigue shot you don't really care um whether you lose two damage on a on a dreb triptych or, or another four attack do you guys think the one damage on dazzling crescendo was worth the tunic this turn it doesn't that doesn't feel correct oh nathan's he, going to two here he he used the tunic to not have to so he could reveal the so he could fuse the crescendo mm-hmm but I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't quite seem right. So is he gonna search Mordred and play Sonata, or is he gonna search Sonata? Okay, just Sonata. So All right. So basically, so, he has to go here. Yeah. So the currently representing uh, uh, reveal nine cards um, with thirteen rune chants on the backside after the Sonata gets played. Yep. X is six over here plus three. Nine I don't think this can threaten lethal this turn. He's going to have to have a very, very nice set of uh, draws. If he can rip four off the top um, and have two or three go-agains in there, maybe with like a ninth blade, um, that would be obviously optimal. But uh, I don't think we've seen a lot of his swarmings and things yet, so there's a very, very strong possibility that this is uh, this hits well. Yeah, those new cards from Everfast, Swarm and Gloom Veil, Rebel and Runeblood, I don't think we've seen either of those. Uh, though we did see a Ninth Blade block oh, with earlier. Oh, that is, that is really unoptimal. So he's going to get two cards here. Nathan is almost for sure, unless his hand is very, very good, he's almost for sure losing this game now. Yep. This is one of the issues that I had with Viscerai. It is the most powerful deck in the format, in my opinion. Um, it does not have any quote unquote bad matchups, uh, but its bad matchup is itself, unfortunately. Um, it, it loses to itself. Um, if the Sonata is not kind to you, no matter how much math you've done to make sure that you have, you know, the correct ratio left in your deck and, um, you just can't, you can't predict the, the two defense reactions being in your in your top it all comes down to an odds game and uh if you don't hit the odds correctly then you know here we are and uh yeah it's it's the same sort of problem that people say when they talk about brute and reinar you know they don't want to have to to worry worry about relics or discarding and drawing the wrong card but over here with viscerai you see potentially the most explosive turns out of any hero in the game but it does come with that risk of randomness you can yep. calculate it a bit but it, there's still uh, the element of the shuffle and uh, hopefully they remember to half the power of the Amplify here. <laughs> well, yeah, no. yeah, so, so many taken. I'm not sure if they did get that. He took 13 rune chance. I believe he was at 38. Uh, so that would put him to 15. I don't think they halved it, which, I mean, it is a trigger that his opponent's responsible for, so... Um, mm -hmm. To swarming. This is uh, not feeling good. Any lightning yeah. press in this game is over. Yeah, 21 life. I don't think the Lexi player even bothers to block this. No, no, they don't. They don't care at all right now. You keep a full card hand. Oh, oh, Jesus, and the Blizzard too. Um, yeah, there yeah, goes yeah. that last card. Or it ends the turn right there. Into the arsenal it goes. Very well timed on that blizzard. I guess there was uh, some ice in that deck after all. Very well hidden by CJ. Um, yeah, we didn't see any ice other than the Pulse of Vault Haven, so that was 
that's unique. But I don't think it's going to take much to close out this game here. Um, this rise chewed through most of his armor. A remorseless, a fantastic follow-up um, to a bad combo. Um, it's going to represent not only a hit trigger, but also the damage. Um, anytime you, what is it, play a card or activate a card? Yeah, it's every um, time you whenever play a you card. play an action card. Yeah. So basically, if you're the Viscerai player here, uh, and that Remorseless is coming in, you're just going to want to dump your whole head full of much. Yep, you're you're going to overblock this for sure. Must have a defense reaction in his. Oh, he's still still blocking. Okay. Blocking five. Did did my screen freeze up? I still see Remorseless in the Arsenal zone. Uh, it must have frozen up. Remorseless has been played and blocked successfully with two armor pieces and a three block. Oh, very interesting. Uh, fatigue shot coming in after the Remorseless. Um, this is coming in for five. Uh, actually, I think he gave it plus one with the Voltaire, so I think it's coming in for six. Yeah. Um, there's just not much Nathan can do at this point in the game. Uh, all of Lexi's things are pretty much break point, and they all have pretty good on-hit effects, so... Um, not sure what it would take for Nathan to get back into this unless he can successfully block and build up to another 10 rune chance or so, which I don't see happening. Oh, that we do have another Sonata, which always reeks of possibility. <laughs> Not when you hit defense reactions in every one of your Sonatas. Yeah, we were talking about whether or not you include those uh, un unmovables against Lexi, but really it's those Revel and Runebloods that are taking the trouble. Yeah, the the reduce the rune chance of doing a work on uh, on Viscerai right now. They are not being friendly. Get an activation of Volts here here to put in another searing shot or blazing. What, what which one is this? Yeah, yeah this is a shot. searing shot. So sharing shot here coming in for five on hit. It deals an extra damage, so you gotta fully block it or you die. This smells like blue. Lightning yeah. thing, lightning, blue, blue, blue lightning, lightning press. press, blue lightning press. Oh, no, oh, okay. Rain oh. Racers, that's game, right? GG. Yep, that is. Game. Yep, yep. So, game one out of the four, four games yep. today goes to CJ with the Hyperloops. Well played, well played. He kept up the pressure the whole game, and uh, and that's what he needed to do. This or I have fallen short to itself there a little bit, but that's to be expected. You have to play you have to play into your outs to Viscerai. Sometimes they don't hit the rune chant generation that you need. 